I started this project in a 3D modeling software called Creo to design the guitar how I wanted. From that model, I could split the main body into layers for laser cutting. My goal was to make the entire body using only plywood, so I ended up using quarter inch birch plywood that I got from Home Depot. This thickness was the max the laser cutter could reliably make it through, and it was easy enough to work with. I first manually cut the wood into blanks that would fit into the laser, which had a limit size of 12 by 24 inches which meant separating the arm piece from the main body of the guitar. From there, I could cut out the six main layers that create the body shape using the laser cutter. Before I glued up the layers, I did some preliminary sanding to remove the burnt edge from the wood to ease sanding later on. This step probably wasn't necessary because I had to do a significant amount of sanding anyways. You can see the difference between the darker burnt edges and the lighter pre-sanded edges here. With the layers prepared, I could glue everything together. So I laid down some wax paper. Oh, let's try that again. I laid down some wax paper. Got out the glue and a whole lot of clamps. Like I said before, the arm was created separate from the body because the whole thing wouldn't fit in the laser. So I designed a joint in the body for the arm to be glued into later, which you can see on the right side of the arm. Once everything was glued and clamped, I decided that I wanted to spice up the top and bottom of the guitar so it didn't look so plain. Using the laser, I cut out a bunch of hexagons using thin Canadian maple plywood and then used an adhesive to arrange them to be cut into the top and bottom layers of the guitar. I used thick paper to hold them all in place so I could lay them down like sticker sheets, using wood glue to attach them to the faces of the guitar. Probably the most satisfying part of this build was peeling away the paper to reveal the hexagons underneath. From there, it was on to sanding, and a lot of it. Small misalignments in the layers meant I had to sand each edge extensively to get it completely flat. I used the belt sander to square up all of the accessible outside edges, and a combination of a Dremel and files to do all of the inside. I also used a random orbital sander on the top and bottom faces to do some of the sanding, but the majority was done by hand because power tools had a tendency to tear or split the hexagons, since the wood is so thin. I'll skip the would-be hour-long montage of sanding, so, a few moments later, and it's done. You can see I also attached the arm, which I did later on since I could more easily sand the parts separately. I took the sanding up to 400 grit sandpaper before moving on to the stain. I also went ahead and 3D printed a stand to hold the guitar upright while I finished it so I could get an even coat on everything. Before staining, I just used some compressed air to filter out any dust that had been caught in between the hexagons. 
I used a stain by Minwax called Ipswich Pine and used a cloth to add a single layer of stain to the body. You can see here the difference between the unsanded, unstained hexagons and the finished body. It doesn't look that different, but in certain lights it does. I taped off all of the body cavities and went ahead with the clear coat. I used a spray polyurethane with a semi-gloss finish to seal the guitar. I started spraying it outside, but because of an issue with wind and debris, I moved inside to do the rest in a spray paint chamber. Before the final coat, I gave the entire surface a quick sand to remove any imperfections. To cover the control cavity, I made this cover using a clear acrylic and engraved a hexagon pattern in it so you could still see some of the electronics inside. I then went ahead and installed the pots and switches, along with the output jack. I used a handmade neck that I bought off Reverb, which is a flame maple neck with a zebra wood fingerboard. I installed the pickups and the bridge before moving ahead with the wiring. To finish the guitar, I installed the tuners and added slots to the nut on the neck. If you listen closely, you can hear the existential crisis I had right before creating the slots. I strung it up, and after countless hours of work, it was done. This is my first time building an electric guitar, so I definitely learned a lot along the way. And I ran into many issues that having more experience and resources might have helped me along. Nonetheless, I think it came out pretty good. I don't have a sound demo right now because I don't have a working amp, but if there's any interest, I can try to make that. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.